Okay, I want to get into this story here uh, about AOC demands because I don't know if you've heard about this, but this was sent to me recently. So we all know about the event that happened with AOC where there were military academies that were there. AOC issued a response to that. I covered that a couple of days ago. And she basically tried to fault the protesters. She told lies about the protesters saying that they weren't even from the Bronx. And that apparently was not true. <clears throat> she told lot. <clears throat> she told lies about the protesters and said that they attack women and people of color. It just, just bogus, just identity politics BS so that she doesn't have to take responsibility for her own actions. Now they have responded to her and they're asking for a list of demands. So I said, I told them I would mention this on the show. I'm actually going to start with the discussion that I had. Uh, I was brought on to rising recently to talk about just that. So I have a clip here. I'm going to share rebuting some of the things that AOC said in her response, which I thought was ridiculous. I went on to say in that video that in order to get into an academy like West Point, you need to receive a nomination from a congressman or a congresswoman uh, slash politician. That's actually incorrect. Uh, I actually know multiple people that have attended West Point. I'm from a military family. I'm very familiar with how these military academies work. And what she leaves out is the fact that a lot of people attend West Point because they have a nomination from their ROTC unit from high school. You do not need uh, a nomination from a congressperson in order to attend West Point. That was just an excuse for her to, to, to explain why she needed to be there. I also want to add to people, it's important that you understand, she goes on to explain that these are academies, they're getting college education, but the idea that when you join these, these military academies is that you are going to go into the military afterwards. When you sign up to join West Point, you are joining the army. So I just want to chime in here because people, some people tried to give me pushback on this. Of, of course, these people had no experience dealing with the military or these academies, so that was really interesting to me. I want to be very clear here. When you go to West Point, and I say that because that is the school that AOC referenced in her response bid. When you go to West Point, you are joining the Army. Not the Navy, not the Coast Guard, not the Marines. West Point is specifically Army. And it was really funny to me the number of people who had no experience in this field whatsoever try to tell me what these schools were about. And so I had to, I went on to the, the web pages of these schools, which they could have easily done so themselves, sent them screenshots of the requirements, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Because my, my experience wasn't enough. I had to go onto the websites to actually show them the proof. And these are people on, on social media. They're ridiculous. But I want to be very clear about that. That is what you do. People were saying, well, you do need that letter to join the Air Force Academy. I know that for a fact. Quickly went on to the Air Force Academy's webpage. Nope. And sent them other requirements. This is what happens when people, people honestly, it's just like, let me jump in and try to defend AOC. I want AOC to be right so badly. Let me try to come back and smear this black woman and tell her she doesn't know what she's talking about. That was some of the things that people said to me. Seriously. Ridiculous. Uh, so AOC is now willing to have this conversation with someone who's very familiar with the process, who knows a lot about the military. She wants to get on Instagram instead, instead of posting that video on Twitter, which is where she received a lot of the criticism. And I also thought it was interesting that she goes on to say in that video that the people who are criticizing her are typically people who come after women and people of color. Mm. Well, I'm a black woman, so she can miss me with all of that. Okay, so that was part of the clip from Rising, and I wanted to make sure that I, I showed that because this is something every time AOC is attacked, she used the same excuse. Every time it's, it's because she's a woman, it's because she's a woman of color, uh, the people don't live there, or the people are right wing. And these are people, a lot of these people are her own constituents that she's smearing. A lot of these people are her own constituents. So the thing is, is this, 
she hosted this event for people who were defending AOC saying she did not host it. If you look at the flyer, it actually says hosted by AOC and Adriano. So it was really interesting to me. All the receipts were right there. But I noticed how quickly people wanted to come and defend AOC. She's a lost cause at this point. Now, the protesters were not happy about the way that she treated them. They were not happy with the lies that she told. And some of those protesters who were a part of the Bronx Green Party, so this is a, uh, a chapter of the, Green, the National Green Party, the Bronx Green Party, they actually issued a response yesterday. And I want to show you that response. So it says the AOC Espelot military drive. This was issued yesterday. Let's go on. See, here's the picture here of some of the protesters, right? Richie, by the way, Richie works in the Bronx. He teaches at a school in the Bronx. But according to AOC, they're outsiders. Let's go on. Correcting the misrepresentation of As Asazio Cortez and common sense Bronx demands. On March 20th, 2023, representatives AOC and Adriano Espelot hosted a student services fair featuring special guests such as the U.S. Naval Academy, the Air Force, Merchant Marines, and Coast Guard. The event was held at Renaissance High School, where minority enrollment is around 94%, and 83% of students are economically disadvantaged. Given the U.S. military track record, of recruiting children and young adults from such categories, many Bronx leftists mobilized to attend. Notice here it says Bronx leftists, but according to AOC, they're right wing. Let's go on. For more on the protest, please see direct video via the YouTube channel Blue Moon Red Wine and firsthand TikTok commentary by protest participant and former AOC campaign worker BX Pro here. So they sent the links. And again, this one, which I think I showed this video to you guys, BX Pro, that was someone who worked on AOC's campaign. But these are right wing people, according to AOC. Our goal to ensure military recruiters did not mislead teens during presentations and militaries and to provide students with a realistic look at what military service entails and what alternatives exist. Most of us are Bronx residents. More than one of us work with AOC on her 2018 campaign and or even hosted her at our homes. And some of them were also Queens residents because Adriano represents Queens. Our ranks also include the brother of Bronx soldier, Private Abdul Latifu, who was murdered at Fort Rucker this year. That lost, along with the deaths of two young female Latina soldiers, Private Vanessa Gulian and Anna Basaldua Ruiz, are examples of exactly what we wish to warn students of at that event. Uh, for those who are not aware, those two women that are mentioned here. Those were the two women that were sexually assaulted and they reported it and they were killed. And they were in the military. Per the school's registration form, the event was open to anyone interested in learning about the different resources and opportunities available to students. Arriving, we found a large military and NYPD presence at the entrance. Most adults without a child were stopped at the door including a few parents we met in line. Although we had registered and provided photo ID, we and those parents were told our names were not on the list and turned away. And why do you guys think that is? Why do you guys think that is? Could it be possible that AOC probably had already told them that she had been confronted by protesters and so anyone who was not an actual student at the school, they didn't really want at those events so that she wouldn't be confronted again. Could that be possible? 
How is it they were allowed to register for the event, but they weren't allowed to actually attend the event? Let's go on. The one member of our group who was allowed to briefly enter reported there were many militaries in, in the school. You see this? Many. I played this video. I shared this video on uh, Twitter. Many militaries in the school. Later, a retired colonel came out to our group and argued the military was a benefit to impoverished youth, which surely echoed the message delivered inside. I played that video on here as well. Meanwhile, all unattended teens were welcomed and waved in. All unattended teens were welcomed and waved in. You see what's happening? Since we, the public, were barred from witnessing the presentations, our group stood outside in the cold to hear from veterans, soldiers, families, and other longtime activists. Representatives AOC and Adriano Espelot snuck in the side entrance. At no point did they acknowledge our presence. In a subsequent Instagram post, AOC claimed to be targeted as a woman of color, ironically at the very time our group, largely consisting of POC and women, raised our voices to protect marginalized teens from exploitative military recruitment. And this was another thing that I had mentioned to people. You have to understand most of those protesters were people of color like AOC or women like AOC. Let's go on. In her video, AOC went on to caution about safety issues for children. Given the event included admission to military institutions such as West Point and Annapolis, none of which had to be there. Safe alternatives for youth are what we are calling for, not as random adults, but as people who live, love, and raise families in the Bronx. Despite AOC's um, assertions, none of what we relay here is rumor right wing, false, vile rhetoric, misinformation, disingenuous, or attacks, all variants on the Trumpian deflection of fake news and alternative facts. We write this as firsthand participants and witnesses, which is what grassroots activism is about. Not because an algorithm tickled our anger centers, but because we here in the Bronx know the, the economic exploitation our teens face, even if some elected officials have conveniently forgotten. That's her. What grassroots activism also requires is political accountability and transparency. In that spirit, we formally issue the following three preliminary demands to Representative AOC. One, that she and the school provide unedited videos of both her and Representative Aspelot's speeches at the event and that all of the protesters as well, the presenters as well. If what, she, if what was said inside was so beneficial to our community, surely she would want other teens to hear those words as well. Two, the Renaissance High School with the life-changing changing full endorsement and equal amplification of, from AOC, agreed to host a follow-up anti-military presentation featuring educational groups such as We Are Not Your Soldiers and Veterans for Peace. When it comes to life and life-changing decisions, doesn't AOC want Bronx teens to be afforded such balanced information and viewpoints? That's a good question. And three, that Representative AOC apologized to our group and all who have been supported, who have supported her up until now for her libelous misrepresentation of longtime Bronx residents who still understand, even if she does not, that raising a ruckus is vital when faced with institutional power behind closed doors. So they're demanding three things. In short, one, they want the school to provide unedited videos of the speeches at the event. Two, they want the school to host an anti-military presentation with groups like We Are Not Your Soldiers and Veterans for Peace. And three, they want AOC to issue an apology. And I'll be honest with you, I don't think those demands are unreasonable at all. 
Doesn't take much to apologize. Doesn't take much for those schools to host an event with like Veterans for Peace. They can get those military schools together. They can get Veterans for Peace together. And three, it doesn't take much for them to send them the unedited footage of that event. Someone recorded it somewhere. Someone recorded it somewhere. And if you were inside that event and you were able to record any of those speeches, reach out to them. Reach out to them or reach out to me. Let us know. That's right, Desert Mantis, those are very reasonable demands, 100%. So they're not happy and I don't blame them. And I knew it, I said, I know this woman is not lying on them in this video. If you have more information, please reach out to them the Bronx Greens, you can email them at bxantiwar at gmail.com. Eric, if you get a chance, can you put that in the chat? That's bxantiwar at gmail.com. And I'll be sure to share these demands uh, elsewhere as well. Because this is, look, here's the, pro see? I told you, look at the protesters. See? See? Most of them are people of color or women. And AOC should really be ashamed of herself. She really should. There's Jose. Jose also lives in the Bronx. Oh, look, there's a woman. Not women in NATO. And then they also put the link to that Democracy Now video. And it looks like they put the link to uh, my clip saying they attack women. So there's the clip from the live stream that I did. But uh, yeah, please reach out to them if you have more information. Because that, that's not cool, man. That's not cool. Not cool at all. She's become a typical politician. She's gotten to the point where she can just lie on her constituents like that. Or, and Adriano's constituents. But the reason why people aren't going after Adriano was because Adriano didn't make the statement that AOC did in 2020. He didn't say that the military, they shouldn't be at the, uh, they shouldn't um, come to those high schools. She did. All right. Let me go to some of these comments here. The Oracle says if AOC had an ounce of integrity, she would have been more circumspect, circumspect about a high school appearance to ensure there were no conflicts. Rondo says, I don't understand why military recruitment of children is not seen as a crime against that child. And thank you for the super chat, uh, Roger. Oh yes. Colonel Sanders unleashing his w, uh, WMD gaslight on us. There you go. I think there's a comment there. Uh, shout out to Delthea, who's been a savvy member for 19 months. Delthea said the poverty draft is real. And the fact that powers that be are acknowledging that fact in public means they have no problem with the poverty draft. There you go. Go ahead and smash that like button, guys. If you haven't had a chance to do so, we'll do a quick uh, like check. Actually, I'm not, I don't like check, but <laughs> CJ like checks, but I'm telling you, go ahead and hit the like button if you hadn't had a chance to do so. Thank you for the tip on Rockfin Roger. I had a young customer some time ago who told me that he went to West Point and he said that Hakeem Jeffries had sponsored him. So that led me to believe that you have to be sponsored by a congressperson to go there, but apparently that's not mandatory, it just helps. Thanks for clearing that up, Sabrina. Yeah, it's not. Like everyone I know that went to, to West Point that actually got in, none of them was sponsored, or not really sponsored, nominated. None of them was nominated by a congress congressperson, not one. So that's that. I'm sure that probably would make you look even better application wise, but sometimes you never know what they're thinking. I mean, I had another classmate who only applied to West Point, didn't have backup schools. Y'all supposed to have backup school. 
He didn't have a backup school, straight A student, ROTC all throughout high school. And he was rejected from West Point. You never know what they're thinking, but yet I know people that didn't have as didn't have straight A's and you know weren't in ROTC the entire time through high school, but they did get in. So sometimes you never know. Ryan said AOC Academy. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear.